Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In a previous lesson, we learned how to output the date, author name, and categories for each blog post. And we also set things up so that the category links to a categories archive page and the author name links to an author archives page. But what we didn't discuss in a previous lesson is how to control the output of these archive pages. So WordPress is very intelligent. Out of the box, it will use the index.php file from our theme folder to generate all these different archive pages on the fly. But we can do WordPress a favor and create a new file in our theme folder named archive.php. And then we can customize how these archive screens behave. So for example, if we click on this opinion link, so this is an archive for the opinion category. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some sort of header or title here that read opinion archives? And then when we click on the author name, wouldn't it be nice if this said author archives, colon, and then the author name? So we're going to learn how to do just that in this lesson. So let's get started. Our first step is to head over to the code, okay? And we're going to create a new file in the theme folder named archive.php. Now you can copy and paste the contents from index.php into this newly created file and then scroll to the top. Okay, so we want to begin customizing this file after this line of code. So I'm going to drop out of PHP and then we can re-enter PHP here. And then the new code that we're going to add will live right here where the cursor is. So we'll write heading level two, sample text. Close the heading level two. So now if we refresh, we can see that when we're on an archive, so this is an author archive screen, our sample text is here. And if we go to a category archive screen, it's there. But if we go to the home page, it's not there. So our archive.php file is working, but we need to customize it and add a bit of logic because we need to output different text depending on what type of archive we're viewing. So for example, this is a category archive. This is an author archive. And if I click on a post and we go look at the URL bar, we can see that this is a month archive, May of 2014. And this is a day archive, the 19th day of the fifth month of 2014. And even this is a year archive. So archive.php is a very flexible, powerful file that can control many different views of our posts. So we need to build conditional logic using if and else if statements to output different titles here depending on the type of archive that we're viewing. So let's get started. We obviously do not want sample text, so we'll delete that and instead we'll drop into PHP and we'll build our logic. So the first thing we'll do is check to see if we're in a category. So if we're in a category, uh, that means it's a category archive and we can output certain text here. So we'll say for now, this is a category. And we'll fill this in with uh, the proper text in just a moment. Uh, but that will do the job for now. Next up, what if it's not a category? So we'll say else if some other condition is met. So then we'll check to see if it's a tag archive. And then we can output a uh, certain text that makes sense for a tag archive there. We'll fill that in uh, a little bit later in the lesson. What if it's something else? So we'll say else if. What if we're in an author archive? Then we can output text that makes sense for an author screen or an author archive screen. So you can see that all we're doing is repeating a pattern. We're saying if this condition is met, do this, else if this, else if this, and we're gonna do this many more times. So we're covering all of our bases. Now let's continue and cover the date bases. So we'll say else if, what if it is a day archive? then we'll need to display some text uh, focused around a date for a particular day. Now we'll fill the date logic in later, but for now we can just say echo day archive. What if it is a month archive? I will say that WordPress makes this quite easy because WordPress has all of these neat functions. Is category, is tag, is author, is day, is month. So we're not having to do the heavy lifting in building these conditional values that that report back true or false. WordPress is doing the heavy lifting. We're just building a skeleton. Uh, so we'll echo out month text there in just a moment. And what if it's a year archive? Is year. OK, 
Okay, and then finally, if it's none of these, if none of these conditions are met, then we'll say else echo just simply archives. So this is the fallback line. If none of these conditions are met, then we'll just simply output archives. Let's be sure to add a semicolon after this line, and let's go test this out in the web browser. So if we refresh, we can see that we're on a year archive, and now the word year is being output. Now obviously we would want this to echo 2014 and not literally the word year, but this is just a proof of concept to make sure that our skeleton logic is in place so far. So if we go to a month archive, we can see that that's working. If we go to the day archive, that is also working. Category archive looks good, and author archive looks good. So now our job is to build out these echo lines for each condition and make sure that the text we're outputting actually makes sense. <laughs> so for this first one, what we need to do is we actually want to output the name of the category. Now WordPress makes our lives very easy in this situation. All we need to do is call a function named single cat title. Yes, it is that easy. So now if we go to a category archive, we can see that the word is in place. Let's head back to our code. So the next scenario is if it is a tag archive. Now I'm currently not outputting the tag anywhere in the blog post uh, template, but if we go to the URL screen, I'll show you that I do have a sample tag set up named sample tag and I've assigned it to two different posts. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Instead of echoing tag, WordPress again makes things simple uh, with single tag title function. So if we refresh, it's that simple. In this case, tags are very similar to categories. So moving on to the next case, which is if we're currently viewing an author archive screen. So we will delete this echo author sample line, and instead we'll write this. The post, which will sort of initialize the first post that is being queried in this archive. And what that will do is make sure that this following line will always work. Echo, we want to output the phrase author archives colon space, and then we want to output the name of the author. So get the author. Now a quick note, in some cases, this line of code will work without this the post function. But if your site has more than one author, and if the stars are aligned just properly regarding the way the posts are lined up on the archive, just include this <laughs> because then with 100% certainty, uh, this line will always work perfectly. Uh, now, because we did use the post, which is sort of uh, querying the first post in the archive, we want to be sure to also run rewind posts so that the loop can go on uh, unaffected. So now if we refresh, or we don't even need to refresh, if we just click on an author to view an author archives, we can see that it's outputting the exact text that we would like. So let's head back to our code and focus on the is day scenario. So we don't need this sample text. Instead, we'll output the phrase daily archives colon space and then we'll use a function named get the date. So now in our browser, if we head to a day archive, so I will adjust the URL to point to May 19th, we can see that daily archives colon and then the date is being output. Now that one was simple uh, and we'll use something very similar for the is month. So we can just copy and paste this line for this is month scenario. We'll change this to monthly archives, uh, but then we wanted to include uh, some options within the parentheses for the get the date function. So instead of leaving this empty, we'll say output the month, capital F, and then also the year. So if we refresh, uh, and if we go to a month archive, uh, we can see that that is doing exactly what we want. And finally, we'll do something similar for the is year scenario. So we'll remove this, paste in our line, change this to yearly, and then inside the get the date function, all we want to output is just the year. Now a quick note, if you're unfamiliar with PHP date formatting, uh, there's different letter codes that output different date related things. So 
uh, the digit for a month or you can spell out the name of the month. You can output the year with four digits or with two digits. You have all sorts of different options and different letters represent different codes. Uh, but if you're curious, go ahead and Google PHP date formatting. Uh, but for now, uh, if we go to a year archive, we can see that it's working just like we expected. Now this means uh, that our archive title section is complete. We've covered all of our bases. Now obviously there's a lot more that you can do with archive.php than just output different titles. Uh, so for example, if on the archive view we wanted to only output the excerpt, we could do that. So we scroll down, we'd find the content and change it to the excerpt. So then we can see that on archive pages, only the excerpt is being shown. And if you click on the actual post, then you see the full post. And this means that the home page is still outputting full posts as well. So you can see that archive.php lets us control many different views for our posts. Uh, so this lesson was just to whet your appetite and get you to begin experimenting with the archive.php file. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye.